Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Chingo Chats. Like I always say, we just recorded an episode of RPT. Boy, it was all kind of racism talk and uh, uh, Canada's Trudeau. Y'all go check that out, man. It has its own RSS feed. Just type in Red Pill Tamales. Give it a review. Give it a share. Here's a good. A like. Here's a good time to mention too. If you're listening or you're looking for Chingo Chats, you probably already found it. If you're listening to this, but tell your friends to uh, type in Chingo Chats in iTunes and click Enter. Don't click on the suggested ch asterisk 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 because apparently they can't figure out the Chingo isn't a bad word in this context. Yeah, man, I'm gonna stop naming stuff Chingo. <laughs> That's what I gotta start doing. But uh, yeah, man, Chingo Chats. Shit, Super Bowl was just happened. We'll talk about that. A lot of uh, pop culture type of shit. But uh, hey, I am your host, Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. One of the S. Good afternoon. Good evening. The architect of the ChingoBling.com apparatus. If you go, man, Rob set it up to where not only can you find tour dates and stuff like that, but you could join the newsletter. You can uh, become a premium member and support this show and, sh- and our other shows direct. That way it could grow. It could grow and it could flourish. Uh, yeah, man. Premium members get access to the Discord, which is a popping ass chat room. And we appreciate all the love. Can't wait to meet you guys in person in the city near you. It's the Legalized Freedom Tour. I know freedom. They're trying to call it a bad word. They're saying um, they're saying right wing domestic terrorist extremist groups have co-opted the word. So now it's a very dangerous word. We're li- this ain't 1984, y'all. But I purposely made sure the word freedom was in my tour name. Just to trigger all you commies. So Legalized Freedom Tour, we kick it off in Raleigh, North Carolina, February 27th, McAllen, Texas, March 5th, Naples, Florida, March 16th through the 17th, West Palm Beach, April 3rd, Tacoma, Washington, April 7th, Nashville, April 14th, Corpus Christi, May 5th through the 7th, Arlington, May 12th through the 15th, Arlington, Texas, May 12th through the 15th, New Braunfels, May 20th, Abilene, May 21st, Lubbock, May 22nd, College Station, two shows just added, May 28th, San Angelo, June 3rd, Odessa, June 4th, Very Woke Austin, we're coming in hot, (laughs) June 9th, Albuquerque, June 15th, El Paso, June 16th through the 18th, and so on and so forth. Just go to chingobling.com. You can get details and ticket links to El Paso, Irvine, Ontario, Denver, Oklahoma City, Chicago, Phoenix, San Jose, Brea, Oxnard, San Antonio, Addison, and we're working on Las Vegas, Salt Lake City, and Houston, Texas. That's a shit ton, man. That's a... Whew. You working. That's a breath full. Hey, man, you got to work while the, while the getting is good. On the road again. You just got to work while the getting is good, man, because you don't know if they're going to try to pull a Trudeau and declare war on their own citizens. Well, we got way more trucks. We got way more truckers. We have way more freedom-thinking truckers. So uh, that's, all, that's all I'll say about that. Yeah, we shall see, right? We shall see. Um, they were, there were rumors that the truckers were going to set it off at the Super Bowl. That, that's and, a, yeah, I and saw only that. the only the feds showed up. They're like, "Where's everybody at?" Yeah, right. Gotcha. Uh, they're actually going to start somewhere else and go to DC. Is from what I've what I've heard. Rob got the inside scoop. He don't want to tell us though. Here, I'll, I'll give you the exact inside scoop since we brought it up. I know I will put it in my notes somewhere. You know, you ever try clicking on a search function of an app and then it just doesn't work? You're like, "What the fuck?" Mm-hmm. They're, they're not, they know they know that you're trying to look up the info and they don't want you to look it up. By the way, you're not following Thug Nasty anymore again. Why does it do that? I have no idea. I, I purposely, when I w- pulled it up for RPT, I was like, is Chingo following him? Because I, I didn't see you yeah. were following him. And then JD, it, it's asking me again, would you like to follow back? Okay. That's some bullshit. All right. So the, um, who is, who, who am I looking, who am I following? Thug Nasty. Oh yeah, Thug Nasty. One second. Um, okay. Let me see. Let me no, see. it says I'm following. Really? It says I am. Wow. Mm-hmm. Refresh it. Okay. Yeah, it says I'm following them. Oh, you weren't following when I checked. It's weird. Okay. Very weird. Uh, after weeks of whispers and rumors, the U.S. trucker convoy is finally materializing. The convoy will march. Uh, will begin marching March 5th uh, to a to-be-announced location in Southern California. Al American will be covering the, every second of it. Convoy website, defeatthemandatesdc.com. Yeah, man. Uh, shout out to um, the Canadian truckers. Shout out to uh, Thug Nasty calling out Trevor Noah. If you want to hear more about that, check out the newest episode of RPT, Red Pill Tamales. Um, man, thank God for people like uh, Thug Nasty that really get it and they really speaking out. And 
Yeah. Now, now he's putting himself in the line of fire. Now, it's no telling how they're gonna try to like run his name in the mud. You know what I mean? They're gonna try to be like, um, "You're on a list, sir. You're promoting <laughs> these these extremist convoy." They're calling them truckers, economic terrorists. But we talked all about it on RPT. Uh, UFC was in town. Yep, sure was. Yes, we attempted to do a fight companion without Rob in a totally different environment. Um, you know, it wasn't here. So <laughs> let's talk about it. How'd it go? I think it was. It was a. Uh, and it, it was like the first. It was like a dry run. Yeah. Right? It was a dry run. Like, how do you promote something the day of? You know, do you stream it to Facebook or to YouTube? Like, how do you go about doing it? Do you bring snacks? You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you talk about? Do and it's weird watching a fight with the sound down. Right. And you're just like so enthralled in it that I'm like. Do I give the play by play or do I just like take it all in? Like, oh shit. I was so heartbroken to see Derek Lewis um not take the W. Not only not take the W, but go out like that. That's a first. That's a first for Derek. Oh, he he's never been knocked out? Not like no. that, no. He's been finished, like uh gone finished not too long ago, but it was TKO, kicks and then uh, a stoppage. Um, but not like that. Yeah, man. It, it happened so fast. Uh Tui Vasa's elbow happens so fast where we're just like what the fuck why is he on the ground what's happening and he rocked high a couple of times yes like two at least three times yeah it's almost like uh, i'd like to hear your take like from a strategy and, and of, of course we're playing monday morning quarterback like, oh he should have did this should have did that percent so they're very brave man they're they're literally putting their lives on the line going in there to entertain us and to make a bag feed the family yeah but um i felt like like, bro, just be a little bit more patient because if you see that, you know, this fool is just walking through these punches, like he's fucking taking these hits and getting back up and shit and still fucking trying to swing back. It's almost like get the strategy going with, you know, the pacing or the distance. Like, do you do we really want to have a, a an all out brawl slug fest? Yeah, brawl. And uh, and when it happened, it, I was like, why? Why are his hands down? It just maybe he thought they were gonna, you know, wrestle, clench, pummel. I don't know what what the hands were down here, but homeboy was in such a close zone where he probably thought, oh, he's right up on me. We're gonna fucking lock up. Yeah. And you, you just see like his eyes were like, Tui. That's how you say his name. Tui Vasa. Tui Tui Vasa. Tai. Tai Tui Vasa. Tai. Yeah. Okay, I was gonna say Tui 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 Vasa. <laughs> it's like he like held his face with the left hand, and then he came in with that right elbow like over like to the back of the jaw and i was like oh my god yeah i think he was already a little stunned before that finishing elbow i think he caught him with a left uh, as they were getting up against the cage and then boom just blasted him and the way uh just before we started just before we hit record you happen to scroll on a brendan shop clip where he said like most 99 percent of people that he's that Derek has hit with a punch like that have gone out like just slept him and he had tied with two or three bombs yeah. and it rocked him and he kind of went back and he saw him be a little dazed but he came right back you saw like when he was getting hit, when Ty was getting hit, you just saw like every follicle in his yeah. hair, even like the scalp, like <laughs> the impact to the tip of every hair on his head. It was like, pa, pinche cachete, güey, totas, putos, ah, pinche marrano, mocos, cabrón. And, um, has he done an interview? Has Derek, has he posted anything? Because um, I, I know he skipped out on the uh, post fight. Yeah, they usually don't interview the post, I mean, the, the loser on most post fights, but okay. sometimes they do, and uh, I thought they would have because he's a hometown hero kind of uh, kind of thing, but now he walked out. I mean, he, he left as they were interviewing Ty. Um, yeah, it looks like he hasn't posted anything. And... Um, and yeah, I don't think he was gonna be at the post fight conference. And then honest. there was a uh, after party at Little Little Woodrow's in Midtown. Oh yeah, I wonder how that uh, how that went. Um, my boy DJ Taco, who DJs at a Paradise City Strip Club, he had Sugar Sean over there. Sugar Sean O'Malley. Oh really? Mm hmm. Yeah, oh. Sugar Sean was over there making it rain. Um, but yeah, we love Derek Lewis. You know, we we hope the best for the you know the future of his career and. You know, see what he decides to do. <laughs> MMA fighting interviewed Trey the Truth. <laughs> MMA fighting yeah. interview? They yeah. interviewed him? Yeah, they, uh, Trey the Truth explains what Derek Lewis means to Houston. It <laughs> was an interview. It's cool. You want to watch it? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I think they're boys. Yeah, yeah, they're super close. I like that stuff. Four, Four Sigmatic. Sigmatic. I reached Four, out to him. Four Sigmatic. Reply to the email. Yeah, please. <coughs> oh, shit. He went to Trey, do... Uh, what brings you back here? Uh, we don't normally get uh, non-fighters doing media during fight night. <laughs> oh, if you're behind the scenes, you know, I'm at just about every UFC event I could be at, man, you know. For real. Uh, we, we, we've seen you pass stuff like, I, I think it was uh, for the John Jones fight, you are passing out bump boxes to a lot of the fans and stuff. So is this like, are you working with the UFC uh, backstage on like business deals? You're just here as a fan. Yeah, yeah, I actually have the um, license to, we have UFC bump boxes, UFC pages. Um, we do a lot of different things, things in the community. Like I just opened a boxing gym and UFC, you know, sponsor some of the equipment. Um, me and Dana, and we working on trying to build a, a park out here for special needs and other things. So we always working. Are you going to try to get into the MMA scene as like maybe a promoter in the amateur level or something, or like the local scene? Uh, I'm not necessarily a promoter, but you know, I do. Um, I sponsor the Fury. Me and my team, Bump Box, we do Fury. We do just about everything. It's just, you know, it's kind of like a family thing now. Anytime you watch me interact with anybody from UFC, it's that's Trey as opposed to here comes the artist or something like that. And you as a Houston native and someone that's actually like, they, you represent this city like, <coughs> like no one else. Can you explain what Derek Lewis means to this city? Because it seems like whenever he does anything on screen, the crowd just erupts for him. Well, it's two things. One, that's my brother. So, you know, we, I don't know if you know, we've always ran together. We saved a lot of lives during Harvey together. Um, we do a lot of different things together, but it's, it's like, Derek's similar to me, like how I am in the rap world, he is in the MMA, like we, we, very, we don't talk much, we don't do much, but people who do come across us, they just love our energy and love the authenticness from us, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's major for us. For me, one of my things on the bucket list is to get him a championship so he can be the first one to bring it home here. What do you like, do you like his chances tonight against Tai Tuivasa? One thing about Derek, man, I could tell a person, don't ever underestimate Derek. Even if Derek tired, even if Derek hurt, if you slip in the wrong situation and he catches you, you got to have a, a, a chin of steel. And Ty did, unfortunately. Even with his last fight, I felt if he would have got the right hits in, he definitely had the opportunity to win. But, you know, each one has his own day, so, you know, he'll be back again. I think in the rap game, everyone's always looking for like the next young person on the scene, like the people on the rise. They want to catch them early in their career. So are there younger fighters you see that like maybe we should look out for in Houston or even already on the UFC roster? Man, it's a lot, man. It's definitely a lot. Um, one thing that I do be real particular about is trying not to name names because when I forget one person, they'd be like, oh, big bro, you ain't say me. So. I think a lot of people look at Adrian Yanez from Houston as like the next big, like he's very young, he's undefeated in the UFC. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I believe another one that... Baby Glock. <laughs> I want to say, man. You know, my boy Chingo. Named Leo. He Baby fought on the, on the... Did he win tonight? I just got here. That's funny, man. So here's a funny backstory. Yeah. First of all, shout out to Trey, somebody who's done very well for himself considering he was blackballed and what's the word <laughs> deplatformed and you know from from 97.9 the box kbxx owned by radio one um which i don't you know since some people are so obsessed with race this was a white program director who basically said you're not going to get no airplay here she's also the one that threatened pimp c and said i'm gonna have i'm gonna say you threatened me so that the parole violation Thing. He would have got sent back. I don't know the backstory of, of that. So basically, man, um, obviously Trey had a huge hit with like Swang, Swang and a Swang, uh, where they sampled Fat Pat. And uh, basically he did a mixtape where he called out one of the morning show females, like just said something about her mm -hmm. on some track. And they made a big deal about it. Like, oh no, you're not going to be disrespecting women up here. And this is our employee and we're going all out. Like they all out declared war. And literally blackballed and like banned him from the radio. Obviously, it didn't really hold him back much, right? Because he had to find a way to work around that debacle. But um, here's here's a funny backstory. So many, 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 many years ago, uh, my boy Crisco Kid was in, in Albuquerque on air at the radio. 
what's Jackson is the uh, tra- the trainer, the wrestling camp out there. Um, oh, and MMA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John Jones is. Uh, yeah, coach, even uh, uh, even Holly Holm. Yeah. Demacio Page, mm-hmm. I believe. So, uh, Crisco hit us up and said, "Hey, Crisco's real cool with Trey and uh, with me as well." And basically, he said, "Hey, they're producing a pilot where they're taking." rappers and they're like pairing them up with these mma people and they're like throwing them in the cage and it's like a funny mix mash of two worlds and hilarity ensues i guess right <laughs> so we're, i'm just like all right i need all the exposure i can get <laughs> i need all the ensues is uh, fucking I, hilarious phrase. i need all the exposure i can get right so the guy who was producing it he um he tried to set me up like he uh he was like hyping me up. he's like man demacio page man he, phew, He's dangerous, man. Oh, yeah, you're going to get in there with him. Like, he's going to show you some things first. And I'm like, I've never done anything MMA related. Mind you, this is years ago. Um, the the female that they, they had hosting at the time, she, um, I think she dates DJ Drama now. But she was like a Playboy model, something like that. And um, so Demacio is like, hey, man, nice to meet you. He's like, all right, man, we're going to warm up, do some burpees. And here's what a sprawl is if someone tries to, like, shoot for your legs. And I'm like, all right, okay, cool. That's, that makes sense. And it's like, all right, and now we're going to put y'all in the ring, right, in the octagon, in the cage. And the producer purposely was trying to get in my head because he wanted a good reaction. He's like, oh, man, this dude's crazy, bro. He fucking, You know, and now they they basically lock us in the cage, and Demacio was playing his role, which I didn't know, which is scare the fuck out of Chingo. <laughs> scare baby Glock. <laughs> this, is, this is before I got my white belt. And basically, he just like, fucking just starts coming towards me dog and i'm like hey what we doing hold up <laughs> oh what we doing what we doing what we doing what we doing like, like let, let me get can i what what are we wait doing? a minute can i throw elbows what are we doing like what's happening are we wrestling He's like are, you can try are we stand up like this dude is is legit demacio is legit and um anyway they had a good laugh about it like ah ha 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 i can't wait to release that let's play it again ha, ha. And i'm like <laughs> hey i'm a funny guy i'm you know, I never fucking... I can laugh at myself. Yeah. Like, I have no pride and ego in saying that I wanted a timeout and clarification. Hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, what we doing? <laughs> I, this dude look like he about to come straight from my head and knock me out on camera. I don't want to get world start on camera. This ain't jackass. If I can help it, let me know. Um, so anyway, Trey, they had him training with, with some other fighters. They paired him up with somebody else from that camp, from that gym, right? And they had him doing, it looked more like they were doing a workout. Now, we were both out of shape rappers. Mm -hmm. You know, we were not prepared for the level of intensity that makes martial arts. I mean, you're gassing yourself. And and they had, I I looked over and they had him uh, like doing the ground and pound, like side control, like just jump. Yeah, hammer fisting, jumping on the dummy, right? I recall them doing that. Shortly thereafter, I think they gave him some Gatorade, but he was just winded gas. He, he ended up start throwing up in the trash can. Oh, shit. Yeah, so he's throwing up in the trash can. I don't judge him for that. I don't think nothing of it. Like, But he took it, and I don't, if Trey listens to this, he, he'll probably, whatever, yeah, it's true. Um, he just, he loves to win. He's, he's very competitive. Um, obviously, you know, he's got the tough guy, you know, persona and, and everything going even though he's a hero to the city and like he said, helped save a lot of lives. He took it so hard. Like he wouldn't let it go. Like even later at the hotel, he's like, yep. As soon as I get home, yep. I'm going to get with my people. I don't know if it was Derek Lewis or what camp. He's like, yep, my boy, he's in that shit. I'm going to go. I'm a, I, almost like he was, he was saying almost like, I can't wait to get my rematch. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to go out like that. And it's just like, bro, you didn't fight nobody. <laughs> like nobody knocked you out. Nobody beat you up. You just had a tough workout and you threw up like nobody's judging you. And like even even like the next day, I'm like at the airport about to check in. I'm like, damn, what the fuck Trey calling me? He's like, yep. As soon as we get home. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, he's I was like, bro, you're good. Like nobody even cares. Like it was That's just it was just a handful of fighters, some camera people, Crisco Kid, myself and Demacio. Like no one cares that you threw up. You're not going to look bad. Your episode's going to be great. So the show never ended up coming out. I don't Aww. know what they did with it. They canned it. But I know they had like um, somebody from the rap group Onyx. Like they had like different random people. But that was um, that was a definitely uh, an experience. That like, sounds like a good idea now. 
That that'd be fun. Like hilarity would ensue if that happened right now. Yeah. I feel like you know how the UFC does the embedded shows, like yeah. you, you the little mini series before big events, big pay per views especially. They should make that a part of the embedded series. Where like if they're gonna have somebody like Trey always there or you or whoever like a Houston show. Who else can you get to, you know, work out or do something with maybe not Derek if he's fighting on the card, but like other people in the in the community from well, the MMA scene? Well, Maz Vidal is fighting soon. Cody when Covington, it? yeah. When March fifth, I believe. So maybe we can plan another uh fight companion and we'll talk about it off air. Like yeah. like we're gonna have a guest or how we're gonna go about it. Hell yeah. Um logistics and all that. But um but yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Have you ever thrown up during a workout? I can't recall, but I don't put that past me. <laughs> I don't think I don't, hard. Think hard. Like in not, maybe not in the middle of it, but like <laughs> yeah, like after you you worked out, you were just like you just, I can't recall specifically, but okay. I wouldn't doubt that that's happened at least once. You ever shit your pants to working working out? You know, like while you're doing an activity. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Where's all this coming from, sir? <laughs> I'm you, just kidding. You're the one that had a, a bout with uh, with gas the other night yeah, when was you terrible. was telling that story about them cookies. Blew a hole in my boxers. Lord have mercy. Um, no, I was just curious because when so this is the Thursday before our finale weigh in of the first Chingo Chats <sighs> challenge, right? The Mamado Mindset Challenge Number One. We're recording it on a Tuesday. Though. We're recording on Tuesday. Yes. Weigh-ins on Thursday, yes. or sorry, yes, on Friday, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. just for content, for, so people know. And uh, I'm just curious. I kind of want to start talking about that a little bit since that was a good way to cue it up. But uh, a lot of people have made some good progress, and yeah. I'm sure there's other people that haven't been posting the pictures and their weights and stuff that have also been participating just as they listen along every week. So uh, we're way over 100 pounds collectively that, That's we've, awesome. that we've all lost, which is That's fantastic. Awesome. And yeah. it's only the first one of the year. We have many more that we're going to do. We don't lost a whole person. Dude, right? Mm -hmm. Like literally over 100 pounds. Like that's in six weeks. And then, mm -hmm. you know, anyway, we'll do a lot where more to in the go? future. Yeah, where to go. Um, when I was younger and I was, I, would get, I was starting to get in shape, I would just throw the kitchen sink at myself, right? I'd go out to the track with, at, our, at my high school, run the bleachers, do, you know, things on the track and do snakes and go to the weight room in like 110 degree weather. So a handful of times I remember throwing up and I remember thinking like, well, this is what it's, this is what you're supposed to do. This is a part of it. Just no telling, no telling what that was, right? Heat exhaustion. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Dehydration. So, all of something, it. Something all fucked it. up. You're like starving yourself and you're running all day and you're sweating. Chale. You, and then you put on the fucking, uh, because I didn't have sauna suits, I'd put trash bags all over, you know, that's what you do, the cheap man's way of putting a sauna suit on. Dude, we should, we should record a little uh, reel after this uh, where, I'll, where I'll do that and we'll talk about like, we'll just be like... Tour's kicking off, and we're doing a weight loss challenge. <laughs> oh, you should do that. Yeah, and I'm like, just fucking dun dun dun. That's hilarious. Hauling yeah. ass. So That's a good one. Jot that down in your notes, actually. Don't forget. Um, yeah, go on. Oh, also, on that same note, I like how, I think it was last episode where you were saying um, you want to do the minimum effective dose. You don't want to fucking overdo it in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. So if you're, if you're going to participate in the second one, and maybe you're kind of like easing your way into it, the beginning of the year, we've all got these huge goals. A lot of people are they're like, I'm going to fucking kill it. And then come March, a lot of people have stopped going to the gym. You know why? Because fuck goals. <laughs> systems. 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 Yes. And that's a systems. big part of the of the, the group in the within systems. the Discord is to build a system with each other. Systems. And talk about it every week. Systems. And then improve upon it. Fuck goals. You still want goals. They're free, folks. They're <laughs> safe and effective. But get your shot. <laughs> Take the shot. How did it go back to this? Because Biden likes to whisper, man. He does. I saw a compilation of that not too long ago where he's, you know, whispering all kinds of different things. And you, you forget that that wasn't that long ago. That was a year ago that he would be giving, uh, whether it was with Trump or whatever, he just, it's, what, what was the most, uh, like, uh, folks? The most egregious one was like him saying, oh, fuck, something about how many people had died or something. Yeah. 100, you know, 300,000 people had died. Yeah. Or something, something ridiculous like that. It's like, yeah, you're part of the apparatus. Yeah. Uh, Fire Fauci. But anyway, back to that. Fauci to lied, Americans died. Where's that guy been? I don't know. Fuck him. But um, yeah, weigh in, brother. Weigh in. How do you feel? Last weigh in of challenge um, one. I mentioned it to my trainer yesterday. I said, hey, man, uh, we're doing our final weigh in this Friday. I was supposed to lose 10 pounds. I'm not there yet. He's like. And then I was like, I think I need to go get some of them supplements he had recommended. Um, and not Mexico supplements. Oh, I didn't say anything. Not Mexico supplements, everyone. I know that's what y'all thinking. 
right now. I can't wait to see TRT Chingo the way that we saw TRT Vitor in the UFC. TRT coming down from the VIP. Heard the life light, lost light without me. Um, Yeah, TRT Chingo. Wait till my insurance kicks in. Y'all in trouble. Anyway, he told me to get like a fat burner and um, I have the list in my phone. It's like CLA and alpha lipoic acid and all this type of fucking uh, fat burner type of digestive stuff. Yeah, that's pretty, uh, like CLA and stuff like that's more of a natural approach. It's not like you're getting, uh, what, what are those ones? Like hydroxy cut and shit like that. Like, no, nah, it's like no. Uh, it's like that vinegar stuff, like take the shot of the vinegar in the morning, which I did not do. Yeah, that's disgusting. Uh, apple cider vinegar, stuff like that. But um, now it's time to throw the kitchen sink. Yeah, with three days left. Three days left. Now it's time. What what uh, what did you weigh in most recently? Do you remember? I have it in my phone. Un momento. Because un momento. if Baby Glock went into full Baby Glock mode, yes, and you were you were saying, man, I got weigh-ins on Friday because you got a fight on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, you would maybe put that trash bag on, you know, hit a couple, you know, get a couple of uh, road work miles in there. Dun, 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 dun. And just sweat it out. And just sweat it out. So look, uh, the most recent one. Yeah. I was at one seventy point nine. And then before that, I was at one sixty eight point five. So I like went up. You also, if I don't, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I heard you say you were gonna go get creatine. Did you get creatine? Yes. Why did you start doing that towards the end of this first challenge? I didn't know it was gonna make me put on weight. You didn't know it made you retain water. They gave me the one that doesn't. That's not a thing. There's, or well, maybe it does it less. Maybe, but the whole idea of creatine is to add more water to the muscles. Okay, so I'm no longer taking creatine. <laughs> no, it's great to take, but you know, if you just started taking a week ago, it you know it depends who you talk to. There's like a loading stage where if you're taking like five grams every day, you know, for the first like three to five days, like you're gonna retain a ton of water, and then as you make it a regular part of your uh, regimen, you might end up taking two and a half grams per you know your your shake or whatever, and then you kind of just level out and you're starting to to maintain whatever your new weight is. But it, you know, if you take it this week only, yeah, you're gonna retain a ton of water by Friday. Wait, did I? Yeah, I think I took these pictures in the correct order. Uh, I'm looking at the pictures. Um, but yeah. Where'd you start? That's a better question. Yeah. <clears throat> well, remember, I was at 174. That's that's where we started the first. year? Okay. And then I got down to 171.9, which is around two pounds. And then I went down some more, 170.9, like another pound. And then I got down to 170.4, half a pound about and then i got down to 168.5 so that was already like six pounds down from my initial yeah and now i'm back up to 170.9 which is three and a half four pounds down so i gained two but but overall you're down about four pounds still yeah that's not bad considering you don't have a ton of weight to lose necessarily right but from here it might the next one i was thinking about it this morning might be a uh, body fat competition a measure of percentage yeah so that would require if you're really serious about this you know because we'll do another weight loss challenge but in this let's say phase two of this everyone's got to go get a dexa and get a your dexa body scan a dexa body scan and actually get your legit body fat percentage i know there's different ways to measure that but you suggest the dexa we should all just do the dexa that's the easiest way because you could find a hydrostatic uh body fat one where they dunk you underwater and then they, they measure it that way. You could even do calipers the easiest way. If you have somebody that knows how to read calipers, you which know, that's probably hard. Yeah, like pinching fat. Yeah, and you got to pinch you know different parts of your body, or you can just find a dexa and go get like a. They usually sell them sell them in pairs or packs, so you and your spouse could go do it. Like you and myself have done it. Me and Don have done it, or just get two for yourself and do one initially, and then start there. And then we'll do another six or eight week challenge, and we'll remeasure it after eight weeks and see how much body fat. So we're not focusing necessarily on the scale. But now we're focusing on like body recomposition. That's a great idea because what you don't want to do is be losing muscle in the process. Yeah, you, know? you don't want to starve yourself and, you know, uh, make more damage to your already sensitive intricacy. That's why, that's why my soul is always like, why are you doing a weight loss challenge? Why are you trying to get skinny? Why are you gonna... Do you tell a woman, don't tell me to live my life. I say, look here, man, I'm, I'm, I'm getting in MMA jujitsu shape. Yeah, because she's you... like, Joe Rogan does jujitsu and he's swole. I said, look here, woman. He's also on growth hormone and TRT. And he's also Joe Rogan. And then I, that's when I brought up, and he uses the N word. <laughs> if you haven't seen the compilation, he said Nutella. Yeah. Shout out Tim Dillon. So, um, uh, Super Bowl. Where, yeah. How, how would you think? Um, we're talking about the show, halftime show or the game? All of it. Because I was, I was rooting for Cincinnati big time. 
And I'm just going to say this. I'm not making excuses, but there were almost no penalties the entire game. They let these motherfuckers play. And there were plenty of plays that probably should have caught a flag. The last minute and 30 seconds, last minute and 40 seconds, there's a combination of like four or five penalties, something like that, that equated to like 37-yard advantage for the Rams and like three first downs, something like that. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, this is unbelievable. And next thing you know, they score, it's over. Are you saying the game is rigged? I did not are, say that. Are we allowed to say that? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're inferring, sir. Hey, what if, uh, what if like the regime apparatus started like cracking down on that too? Dude, I wouldn't be um, surprised. Many Americans have been implying that the Super Bowl is rigged, and that's uh, counterproductive to the health and safety of Americans. So we're asking big tech to step in and do more. Conspiracy theorists have said that L.A. needs a win because their economy is falling apart, and the people are rebelling, and nobody likes Governor Newsom, but we needed the Rams to win. Yes. And that's why they won. Yes. Many right-wing extremist groups, uh, many Trump-tard MAGA <laughs> QAnon people believe that the Super Bowl is rigged. And we're going to start cracking down. So we're asking Twitter, Spotify, and all of Big Tech <laughs> to do more. I believe it. If you told me that, so I'd be you like, can, you know what? So you can no longer. We're yeah. going to fact check it. I'm in. I'm in. These are third-party fact checkers, Rob. Yeah, they totally they totally. Don't, don't worry that we paid the third-party fact checkers. They're, they're being totally unbiased. No, I believe them, yeah. And what you just said is mostly false. Absolutely uh, not. I believe that it's completely true. But we'll never know. You're going to be in a gulags like that with that attitude. I mean, I'm already, I'm already going there. Come on. Um, I'm we, too much of a free thinker. I totally skipped over to Izzy, Adesanya, and uh, Whitaker. You did. Fight. Yeah. And I jumped straight to Super Bowl conspiracies. Yeah. I thought you were, were going to like do a little hip hop back and forth. A little yeah. hopscotch. But let, let's go back to UFC and then we'll talk about the, the halftime sure. show and all that shit. What did you think of the main event? Um, and the outcome. Yeah. Okay. So... It it was close, it, it was kind of close-ish because uh, Whitaker had a few takedowns. That's got to count for something. Um, Israel, it, he just didn't seem as like. I mean, he outclassed him. You know, he's still fucking really good, and I guess he, you know, he won. He did win. Um, you know, because he he held the belt and everything. And I'm not an expert. Like like I told, uh, I think I mentioned on the on the uh, fight companion. I was like, well, doesn't Whitaker have to win like more convincingly? Like you have to like You gotta really beat the champ. Yeah, like to take beat the, the champ, belt. take the belt. And and Juan was like, Yeah, I don't think it really works like that. He's like, I don't think that's a factor. And I'm sticking to it and I think it is. Um No, it absolutely is. Juan Catelaseco. Juan he knows a lot. He yeah. knows a lot about that shit. <laughs> but uh I think he may be he may be a little bit misled by Maybe. fake news and propaganda. A little bit out of his depth. Yeah. Good guy. Many people say good guy. But Juan Perez Whitaker did not win, uh, but yeah, it was it was close. It was kind of close. Guy. Nice guy, very nice guy. <laughs> you know, I wish him the best. <laughs> Many people say, but like, but I you know I was used to seeing the Israel where it's like you they totally he totally dominates. dominates. You're just seeing like Matrix style defense where he's like dodging everything. I thought that was coming at the beginning because he rocked him. He might have knocked him on his butt like right in, in round one. And Whitaker? Izzy, yeah, no, Izzy. Yeah, Izzy drops Whitaker, and then he literally just kind of like he goes like that. He slows himself down, and then he just kind of starts picking him apart that first round, and then he dominated the first round. Then from there, those takedowns started taking to effect. Uh, Whitaker started getting in more. He was landing that left hand. I don't think he threw any rights though. Really, the entire time I didn't see like I think his corner even said like throw the right, throw the right. And and he's traditional stance. I'm trying to think. No, he must have been southpaw because he was throwing the left a lot, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly. Either way, he didn't throw enough combinations he just kept throwing the one he kept slipping in throwing the the one hand mm. and you know and then the takedowns but so it wasn't that effective the the, the going no because izzy was throwing like three four five punches at a time you know and the jab was getting through it was a it was a really good fight because despite all that it still felt like a closer fight than what it ended up being a unanimous decision i thought that was horseshit so you don't think it should have been unanimous no you thought it was way closer i thought it was way closer yeah. And I'm pretty sure I heard the commentators also saying that, like, yeah, I thought uh, some of the rounds were a lot closer than they. Well, Whitaker thought he won, and Mighty Soul thought Whitaker won too. I was just biased because I like Israel, yeah. So, <laughs> so I just, I just saw what I wanted to see. And then, like, let's get out of here, let's beat the traffic. It was like I, that, that. I heard what I needed to hear. I was like Fat Joe listening to the, uh, <laughs> to the Joe Rogan N word compilation. I, that, that, that. I heard what I needed to hear. I, that, 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 that. Adesanya, Adesanya won. Uh, I love how Adesanya stuck up for Rogan. Oh, yeah. He's like, Joe Rogan, that's my Nutella right there. But somebody at, 
Uh, it was at the press, uh, the pre-fight, whatever conference. Or they tried to ask Dana White that shit. Oh, it was a controversy, uh, Joe oh, Rogan. I didn't see that. So basically... Was it the same fucking guy? Because they booed the shit out of him when he asked that question. I don't know who asked it, but there was the version where you see a little bit more context and you see like the different angle where it's like Dana White is at the podium and it seemed like they were kind of directing it at him. And as he's like sh- about to answer it, I guess, Israel's like... I'll take this. I'm black. I can answer. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that's how it and started. And then it's like, whoa, Izzy, they're going to call you all kind of coon sellouts. You are carrying water for the white man. Uh, he sold out because, you know, Rogan's his boy and they just want faith. Same shit they said about black comedians that stuck up for Rogan. Um, you know, he said some really nice things for him. So I, I think that that was very admirable, honorable. Yeah. No, uh, I thought the fight was great. I feel like... I, f- I guess it seems like uh, who who was the fight who was the third fight before the co-main? It was a uh, Cannoneer mm-hmm. and Brunson, right? Blonde Brunson. He got he got stopped. Uh, if Cannoneer can put those fucking cannon legs to use and take him down the way uh, Jan Blahovich took Izzy down when he moved up to light heavyweight for that one fight, then it's over. Like I-, I love watching Izzy fight. The technicality is unbelievable, but he doesn't have any ground game. He can't wrestle much. Granted, uh, he ca- he popped right back up when Whitaker took him down which was super impressive, but Whitaker got him down. Had Whitaker been a little bit bigger, maybe of equal size, I think he probably could have had more of an advantage. He just wasn't strong or heavy enough to keep him down. And Whitaker used to wrestle. Yeah. So, hey, this might be an opportunity for um, Stylebender to go back and, you know, be like, okay, I need to brush up on some of this ground game shit just to uh, just to be just as convincing on the ground as he is as, like, kickboxing and yeah. all that. Yeah, for sure. A uh, good event overall. Uh, it was fun. There was a lot of finishes in the in the prelims. I don't know if you caught m- many of those, but a lot of submissions. It was fun. A lot of good jujitsu that night. Uh, solid event. Hell yeah! It was cold as balls too after we left. Um, oh, you were at Frank's, right? Yeah, we went to Frank's, and uh, shout out to my boy Daniel Guerrero, who also does stand up, also does jujitsu. We were like, Daniel, give us a ride to Juan's car because <laughs> it was that fucking cold. Damn. Yeah, it was freezing that night. Oh, the wind was super strong. And then that- downtown, it was like. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it was like piercing through your through your skin. Uh, Super Bowl. I didn't really pay attention. Um, we had been wanting. It was Valentine's weekend too, and basically, what our plan was was like, when did I when did I make that meal for us? Uh, you made a meal. Yeah, man. You cooked. What, what's up? Whew. I fucking threw down, my boy. What? Tell me. Tell I made me. some motherfucking uh, Parmesan encrusted. Basically fried chicken, because <laughs> you you had to fry it. <laughs> you didn't do it in the air fryer. Fuck no. Whoa. Fuck no. What are you talking about? Hell no, bro. I almost cussed out my wife. <laughs> she made some damn chicken tenders in the fucking air fryer, like raw chicken where you, I guess she you does, batter it and bread it. Yeah. Yeah. You just didn't do it right. She didn't do it right. Oh okay. It was. Wait, I want to hear about that first before you tell me what okay. you cooked. Why did you almost cuss her out? Were they that bad? I mean, I didn't almost cuss her out. I'm saying that over here no, between no. you and I because I know she ain't listening. Please this, keep it this up. far deep. Yeah, you know, shit. I'm the man of the house. Fuck you, mean. <laughs> As I look over my shoulder, um, <laughs> make sure my phone ain't on. So basically, man, she what is she? She made her world famous mac and cheese. She hooked it up. She made a whole bunch of stuff uh, one night. That might, I don't know what that was, Friday night or Saturday. But the tenders in the air fryer, it just, it, I thought I was eating gator. What do you mean? I mean, it was just like, it felt like somebody cooked it with a blow dryer. It was like, <laughs> just like chewy, gummy. Oh, no. You almost, you should have got sick by eating that. Chewy, gummy chicken? I mean, I'm like, what's. That's salmonella, boy. Yeah, I don't, I'm like, don't ever make tenders in the fucking air fryer ever again. Did she say, Como right. me llamo Pedro. She just looked down to the ground. <laughs> yes, sir. And she just saw my shoes and she just said, si yes, jefe. She said, You the head of the house. Si jefe. It says in the Bible. Um, my chicken, however, boy, get ready. Whew. I, I'm not even gonna give y'all the whole recipe. I might, I might, we might do an email blast. Okay. Yeah, Chingo's world famous Super Bowl, Parmesan crusted. So basically, you um, you know you get the Italian panko breadcrumbs. You mix in a whole bunch of that like fresh grated Parmesan in there. Some other things. You um, you make sure it's sticking to your chicken. You get your pan with your oil ready. You drop that motherfucker in there. What other what what else did I make? I can't remember what are the sides. 
I can't recall. But that chicken was juicy. Oh, I know what it was. Pasta. It was like... Um, Starting to see where those two pounds came from. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> I, I didn't eat that much, though. I'm not going to lie. So basically, you then you take heavy whipping cream, butter, more Parmesan. Now you're making a sauce for your pasta. It's like garlicky and cheesy and, and creamy. And that shit was off the hook, bro. Anyway... We uh we went to evening church, which we had never done before. But at Second Baptist, they're, they're doing this thing. I don't know how long they're going to keep it up. But it, like, starts at 4 if you want. You can, like, go to the gym. You can leave your kids, like, in the classroom or the playroom or something. You're able to hit the weights and stuff. And then they even do dinner there. They played the game. Uh, but they cut out the commercials. So it, it went back to the Second Baptist logo in the cafeteria as the game was playing. <laughs> So I didn't get to really see. I, I didn't care about the game. It, the shit was boring. Yeah, yeah. Football to me, I mean, over the last couple of years has been my least favorite sport. To tell you the truth, the football. I mean, Super Bowl is fun because it's like you want to see a champion of some sort win, right? But eh. it just seems like back in the day. I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with my youth, where like it just seemed like everything was better, including sports. I mean, you just remember like motherfuckers playing in the snow. Yeah, you know. You, you remember had, Brett Favre playing for the Packers. Yeah, like uh. The refrigerator Perry, you know what I'm saying? Like these, uh, 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 wh- uh what's his name? Lawrence, what's that dude play for the Giants? Oh, uh, Taylor. Yeah, like LT. You know what I mean? Of course, the Oilers had a fucking squad, but you know, you had everything from like a Boomer Esiason and just like you know, motherfuckers was that was football. You was playing in the cold and shit and. It's like the mics were, hoo, hoo, hoo. you even like heard the chingasos better. and Yeah, they seem like more alpha. Now they're all fucking, you know, no offense, but they're just like, yeah, you used to have like Justice Warriors football players. Yeah, you used to have like a couple obese motherfuckers on your, on your, your linemen. <laughs> I mean, you had Emmett Smith, you know, um, what's the, what's the, uh, Barry Sanders. <sighs> I don't know. I'm sure somebody today could be like, well, Chingo, there's also these days. You, you know? got Odell Beckham Jr. with his earrings and his blonde hair. Doing the fucking <laughs> all in the fucking end zone and shit, dancing around. Yep. So yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of superstars these days too. But um, I don't know, man. I'm from a different era, bro. Yeah. Uh, it was it, it was what it was. I mean, f- for me, baseball is still the most fun. I don't as I've gotten older, baseball is wow. more fun to watch. Wow. Yeah, I used to be the same way. I'm like, it's so boring and slow. It is slow, but if you just kind of start appreciating it is what it is, like the the. Just the whole fucking thing. I don't know. I, I guess you just reach a certain age. It's like when I just bought something new balances. You get new balances in a lawnmower and you start appreciating baseball. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. You start focusing on school zone taxes and 100%. Shit like Is my that. grass greener than that neighbor's over there? Because if it's not, I need to change something. You're here worried about the HOA fees and shit like that. 100%. But um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was a good game. I didn't really pay attention. I was just more concerned with like. So y'all still in a state of emergency? Like you got 75,000 people crammed. None of the celebrities wearing masks. I know this is an RPT type of discussion. But the next day, Monday morning, you had to muzzle up your children, block half of their way of communicating. You know what I mean? You're stunting their development and offer political theater. It's what it is. I mean, we didn't mention Emmett Smith. He's a, he was a big star back then. He was just one of the guys that you would, you're seeing the video go around of him in the crowd, you know, in the in the celebrity box. It seems like all those people were up there. Yeah, it's uh, political theater, and it is RBT ish, but it's also so cultural. It's 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 a super prominent cultural conversation because uh, that is still probably the epicenter of all this, right? You think New York or California takes a cake right now? Probably probably L.A. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a few places though. I mean. I don't know. I wouldn't doubt that Portland's a little extreme. I think D.C. started to walk back some of their mandates. But um, what would you think about the halftime show? Unpopular opinion. I thought it was terrible. What Everything about it? Or the whole the, thing. The music or yeah, the I dancing? Mean, uh, yeah, I mean, it just wasn't... I was not excited about any aspect of it. I totally forgot who was on it until like they started coming out. I was like, oh, yeah, this person's going to be on and that person... Uh, the, I'm probably out of everything. I think Kendrick Lamar was probably like my favorite part about it. And then I noticed Anderson Pack was playing drums. That was probably one of the more talented people that was on the stage, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I said it seems like they put together the most '90s uh, show they could, so that people would forget about what's happened the last two years and take me back to a time where things were simpler and fun and and all that. And that's what it felt like the show was, like like Men in Black hitting them with that little pin. 
Like, here's a show with Eminem and Dr. Dre and, and Snoop. And forget what the Democrats <clears throat> did to you. Yeah, yeah. But also, I'm going to kneel in the middle of it. The only person to kneel in it is going to be the white guy. So you don't forget all of it, but you forget most He's of like, it. He's like, look at all these black millionaires that are around me on stage. Yeah. And who was the chick? I forgot the chick's name. Mary J. Blige. Mary J. Blige. I've, I mean, I know you're a fan. We've been there. We talked about it. Yeah. I'm sure Mighty Soul could give you an earful about that. Yeah. But what'd you think? I mean, um, it was interesting. The uh, all white setting of like the little houses. I was yeah. Like, Mighty Soul was like, are those container homes? Like the little <laughs> containers. And then she's like, what's that on the ground? I was like, I think it's like a sky view of the city or something. Oh, is that what that was? Basically, <clears throat> yeah. But I mean, again, like, you know, I'm old too. So I'm sitting there just looking at it like, okay, why don't y'all show the real LA? You know what I'm saying? Lockdown, government micromanaging you. Like, show everybody in masks. Like, y'all should all be in masks. Put some homeless people on that little stage and shit. Have, have a little bum and shit dancing. <laughs> they should have had like... Play Gil's video on the Jumbotron. Yeah. Have a dude see walking around uh, needles and shit. With hepatitis all on the needles and shit. You Shooting just, up on the streets. Uh, dodging doo-doo on the sidewalk. That's what they should have had. Doo-doo on the sidewalk and somebody see walking. And, you know, I mean, I grew up I grew up with all that music. I grew up listening to all this gangster shit being glorified. But now as an old man, you're kind of like, Eminem, why are you kneeling? Like, you feel guilt? Is this white guilt? Is this a struggle session? Like... No, are, are 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 you do you feel bad that you're appropriating black culture and you came in like Elvis and and you made millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars off of it like why do you who are you apologizing to you know what I mean like you know I'm surprised he didn't do his Trump rap here in horns <laughs> horns in the foreign corns torrents oh download torrents download torrents what do you think is the <laughs> evil best? man orange the best. Yeah, he'll, then he'll go on a whole orange rhyme. We've played that video before. Orange. What do you think is the best? Do you remember like the best halftime show? Oh man, if you want to talk about real talent, I mean, shit. Um, I, I I may be wrong about some of these, but like, didn't Michael Jackson and Prince do the halftime at some point? Uh, together, no, probably separate. I mean, yeah, I not yeah. together. Not <laughs> yeah, together. Yeah. Yeah, Prince is always uh up there. People always mention that one. One of my favorite ones is from 2014 where you had uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers and Bruno Mars. Do you remember that one? I believe so. Uh, you want to put pause on this? Yeah, go for it. So we can calmly. Listo. We back. And we're back. The baby Glock, baby bladder. <laughs> the baby Glock. Baby, baby bladder. bladder. Yeah. So uh, you're talking about Bruno Mars and uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers? Yeah, that was actually, I pulled up a video and it was literally the first one that came up on the top 20. No, he's, that's a talented that's a motherfucker, talented boy. Motherfucker. When I seen him play all the instruments. Welcome to Watch Mojo. God today, damn it, I thought they were going to play that one. Beyonce wearing the uh, Michael show. Jackson suit. Lame, you two. Some classic rock and R&B flavors to the proceedings. Oh, uh, sure, I forgot about Usher. Sure. It was a performance. No extravagant light show. Yeah, fuck all that. Uh, yeah, but Bruno Mars one's always on the top of my my head because he's so damn talented. Uh, Justin Timberlake's talented too. Oh yeah, Justin Timberlake was a good one. Uh, was his was his Super Bowl the one where he went? And, that was an MTV thing. You don't mean the Janet Jackson one, right? Oh, that too. Yeah. Yeah, there was a. He's been he's done it a couple times, I think. Yeah, man, they just were better. They they, they haven't been good over the last like five years. In my opinion. I mean, I mean, obviously, man, I'm sure the West Coast was loving it because that's like their local. That's like that's like you watching the Super Bowl in your hometown and you see fucking Slim Thug and you know what I mean, you know, all these people up there, yeah. all these Houston rappers on stage. True. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and that's I mean, you know, Dre and Snoop and all this stuff. It's iconic as a motherfucker. But, uh, you know, anytime somebody like Eminem wants to kneel, like I almost want to be like, OK. At some point, you're going to have to follow up and explain to us what do you think the problems are specifically so that we can work on solutions. Yeah. Don't just, you know, don't treat people like victims. and sh It's almost offensive in a way. Like if I was a black person, I'd be offended by Eminem. I'd be like, bro, we're fucking free. Like we can vote. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, unless you unvaccinated, then maybe you could, you know, are you kneeling for the unvaxxed? Yeah. Because <laughs> last time I checked, that's really where the discrimination is happening. Are you kneeling for the unvaxxed? Is that who you're kneeling for? The unvaxxed. And then you had the uh, the pre-Super Bowl weekend debacles that were going on with the looting and the shootings. Kodak Black got shot. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Shot at or shot? Shot. Wow. Both. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, the looting of the jewelry stores. They they uh, classified it as a what was it? Not a riot, but it was an it was an unlawful demonstration at some point. Even after they won, weren't they tearing? It was shit after up? they won. Yeah, they were jumping on people's cars. There was a truck. There was like a tiny Toyota Tacoma that was like uh, trying to make its way through a, a street, and this crowd just swarms it. Probably a hundred people. Five, six, seven of them are on top of the hood. Don't on, worry, the bed uh, of the truck. Kamala will raise money to bail them out. It's it was a it was a pretty crazy sight. But if you're a white man and you were at the Capitol on J six, guess what? You don't have civil rights. You don't have due process of the law. You don't have privilege. So if you're gonna be protesting and acting a fool, it's better off if you're a minority. Then you can use your minority privilege, and then politicians will come bail you out. Uh, so the L.A. Times here, it's funny, that, that now I see it. Uh, rapper Kodak Black was among the people injured in the shooting in the Beverly Grove. Wasting the Trump pardon. Bro, Trump pardoned you, Kodak, and got you out of jail. And, um, and you over there fucking acting a fool. His real name's Bill Capri. Kodak Black? Yeah. Bill? His name is Bill. Capri, wow. Capri. He was shot in the foot during the during the confrontation, according to law enforcement. Uh, source familiar with the investigation. That could be dangerous, too. Damn. Getting shot in the foot could fuck you up. Uh, will Suge Knight's attorney follow the rap mogul to prison? This is in that same article. I don't know what Suge Knight's attorney had to do with all this. Long story short, it was a lot of crazy nonsense. People were, like, uh, looting uh, regular stores, jewelry stores, just... Setting shit. I don't see people shit, setting shit on stuff on fire, but they were wilding out. They were wilding out. Está cabrón. Yeah. Está cabrón. El, you know, L.A., man, it's a big old city. They, it'll absorb that like <laughs> nothing. It's like, come on. That's another weekend. They're like, this is nothing compared to the L.A. riots of the 90s. Yeah, you can always revert back to that, right? Like, ah, get over it. This is nothing. I mean, bro, they had the, the Korean rooftop cats, and you had a... Uh, the dude named Reginald Denny, they pulled him out of his 18-wheeler and, and hit him over the head with a brick. That that was a real riot. Take notes, kids. <laughs> or don't. How Back in that? the 90s. So we kind of, you, you mentioned it on uh, RPT about Kanye trending and, and all that. I, I was unaware of this. Might as well kind of touched on it. But then when she tried to find the post, I guess he had deleted them from his Instagram or... Really? Yeah, they were they were gone. He Not was posting much. new ones. Like he, he deleted the ones that, that started trending originally. So I was unfamiliar with the whole, uh, he was talking about the media. Oh, he sure did. Yeah, Hillary. And then I'm not following him again for some reason. Dude, fucking wild. This is so hilarious, bro. Okay, I'm going to try to like explain some of this shit. But before I do, Kanye reminds me of like, uh, almost like David and Goliath in a way. Mm -hmm. Because he's using like this asymmetrical warfare. Where he like a like an energy vampire, where he's able to fucking be the center of attention, be trending more than the Super Bowl during the Super Bowl, like with a handful of posts. Yeah. And it was just so funny how he was talking about Ellen DeGeneres and and uh, he was calling Pete Davidson Skeet Skeet Davidson. Then he called out his boy Kid Cudi, who also wore a dress for SNL, which is a show that Pete Davidson is on, and his. Uh, estranged wife, separated wife, whatever. She was also on that show, hosting and cracking jokes about Kanye. And then he mentioned Hillary, <clears throat> almost to say that Hillary Clinton, Ellen DeGeneres, and the elites, the the liberals that control media, are all in cahoots, basically trying to use Pete Davidson as a pawn to frame Kanye as this crazy person and destroy his family and his life. He said Ellen and Hillary have been in Kim's ear for years. He said Pete Davidson is a pawn. Uh, where is my friend Kid Cudi? Why is he not 
defending me? Why is he wearing a dress on SNL? Uh, why does Pete Davidson have a Hillary Clinton tattoo on his body? Talking about she's my hero. Like, who the fuck would do that? What the fuck has Hillary Clinton done to where you're going to want, as a grown-ass man especially, if you're like some little liberal chick that's like, oh, my God, female power. She's a woman, but she's a woman. If you do that, I get it. Pete Davidson, he was basically saying that's Hillary's ex-boyfriend. Almost as if like he's a pawn and they're using him. Oh, and then he posted a picture of Pete Davidson in his tidy whities with, uh, what's his name? Machine Gun Kelly in his tidy whities frolicking around eating popcorn on a couch. And he said, you will never meet my children. Kanye put that in the caption. And Machine Gun Kelly is dating the other Kardashian sister. So in essence, it looks like the two in-law Kardashian boyfriends, they, they went white now. You know, they say once you go black, can't go back. Apparently you can. <laughs> so so, so now you got Pete Davidson, who's messing around with Kim, and then Machine Gun Kelly, who I guess is messing around with uh, Courtney. He's Chloe, not with, Chloe. Uh, he's not with uh, Travis, Megan Fox? Oh. You, th- you talking about Tra- uh, Travis Barker? Travis Barker's with Courtney. Courtney, yeah. I could have... Sw- okay, he's with Megan Fox. You right. Okay, I fucked that up. <laughs> I could have swore. I, th- I could have swore it was three tatted up white boys. It was Travis Barker. It was Pete Davidson. And then they had Machine Gun Kelly on there. But I, maybe they maybe they were just saying skinny white boys with tattoos are getting all the girls. Maybe that's what they're saying. <laughs> now I got to pull this up. De todos modos, De todos wey. modos. De todos modos, Kanye was trending more than the Super Bowl during the Super Bowl. And people were like, oh, my God, he's off his meds. Oh, my God, why is it in all caps? Oh, my God. And then he posted this one. He said, I've learned that using all caps makes people feel like I'm screaming at them. I'm working on my communication. I can benefit from a team of creative professionals, organizers, mobilizers, and community leaders. Thank everybody for supporting me. I know sharing screenshots was jarring and came off as harassing Kim. I take accountability. I'm still learning in real time. I don't have all the answers. To be a good leader is to be a good listener. Who is that from? Kanye. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then here go the fucking photo. Okay, so it's Pete Davidson, it, Machine Gun Kelly, those two. Feeding each other um, popcorn in their underwear. It's for a Calvin Klein ad, all right? You misogynistic uh, white face of brown supremacy or whatever the fuck they're going to call first it. Of all, first of all, Machine Gun Kelly hair plugs look stupid as a motherfucker. <laughs> You look dumb as a motherfucker with them hair plugs. And then he got tattoos way up his thigh. Anyway, this shit look real goofy. Feeding each other popcorn. Frolicking around in your drawers. And this boy got his mouth all open. Like, with their pants down. You got your pants down around your knees. And then and then you're feeding each other popcorn and you're frolicking. Gay. MGK. Yeah, what are you going to do? That's the, the lamest shit for an advertisement. But hey, maybe that sells. Maybe that's what gets people to buy Calvin Klein underwear. Long are the days of, uh, who was it? Not Matt Damon, uh, the other guy. Mark Wahlberg, right? Yeah. People like that, you know, showing off their alpha masculinity and some tidy whities Now it's two dudes feeding each other popcorn. That's where we're at. And uh, yeah, man, it was like, what? So... The, the weirder part, honestly, here's another uh, angle. I don't know if it's the same one, but like his jeans are still like, they're below his knee. Like they're not even off. They're just like, yeah, it it's some like weird imagery. I yeah, I don't know. Huh. Strange. Um, I mean, if you're, if you're making a Calvin Klein, uh, Calvin Klein, Calvin Klein, Whoa. if you're making a Calvin, if you're making a Calvin Klein ad, there's a budget, there's hair, makeup, photographer, there's a creative director, like some thought. Like, they have to pitch ideas. Like, all right, uh, what if we get Pete Davidson and Machine Gun Kelly? Um, do they have their pants on or off? Uh, they'll just be, like, around the knees. And are they eating anything? Uh, yeah, maybe, like, popcorn. Um, and, like, where? Like, oh, on a couch. Mm. Okay. Anyway, what I was trying to say is, like, I love how Kanye is able to basically, like, call out a bunch of motherfuckers Get people talking, uh, get the Clinton crew on their heels. Like, oh my God, he's about to expose us. Like, are we going to have to frame him? Yeah. Basically. And uh, people were joking in the comments, like, oh, you better not end up on her body count. Yeah. No, frame, not to be confused with hanged. I mean, shit. 
she spied on a president. You know, ain't no telling what she'll do to Kanye. Um, he also said something about his uh, daughter and TikTok, right? She didn't Kim have one of you know his kid, right? Am I tripping? Yeah, yeah, North, uh-huh. North, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, which is very you know smart of him to be like she doesn't need to be on TikTok. You know, I think she had makeup on too. She's like six or seven. Uh, is she that young? Yeah, pretty sure. Nah, she gotta be a little bit older than that. She might be like nine, ten, eleven, maybe. But it's still, still, it's unfortunate, man. She's like eight. Okay, she's eight. It's unfortunate that, like, you know, I'm not saying, oh, let's feel sorry for celebrities, but like, as a father, to be going through all this shit publicly, and a lot of it, he makes it public, right? Because yeah. that's like his only defense in a way. It's like I have this phone. I'm going to have to let motherfuckers know Pete Davidson, Skeet Davidson, got a Hillary Clinton tattoo on him. And he, he's an operative, basically is what he's saying. He's like, SNL is just an extension of the apparatus. Pete Davidson is a pawn. And then he even said, oh, and lo and behold, he has this big role in Frozen 3. You know what I'm saying? And then he was like, and I think he said Machine Gun Kelly's song is in the fucking soundtrack. And almost like, hey, you're going to get favors and favor and hooked up. If you fucking play along with this fucking thing, you don't mean this is genuine love. You don't think they're in true genuine love and they're, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm sure you don't have to twist his arm too much to be like, Hey dude, you got to go out with Kim K. Like, I don't think it's like, Oh man, nothing like that. But I'm curious to know what the fuck Kanye's thinking and what, what he knows. I mean, Hey, maybe she does have genuine love for him. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I don't know. It's exhausting because everything that we talk about does circle back to Hillary. circle back to Hillary. Not just Hillary, but just politics in general. Everything has been politicized. One, especially once you realize that culture and mainstream media and even these big like events like the Super Bowl have like you'd be surprised if you see how many foreign entities, you know, whether China has any say. <laughs> Yeah. What does the CCP like we're in the middle of an information war, right? It's going to be very carefully curated that nobody uh, streaks the field in name of the Uyghurs. Yeah. You know, we want to make sure that uh, um, no Latino MAGA people drop a flag and say, fuck Newsom and end your fucking mandates. You know, Newsom Lini. <laughs> Like they have, it's a curated experience. That's a good one. They have to make sure that like Snoop Dogg doesn't like raise his, raise his fist for the Uyghurs, right? It, it would be very mm-hmm. interesting if Dre, Kendrick, Fifty Cent, Mary J, and everybody else up there had like opened up their shirts and said, you know, decouple from China, that you know, genocide is bad or something. Like free the Uyghurs. If they had done that, how bad would it look? Like the NFL would be like, oh, we can't silence a black man. We can't do that unless they're Candace Owens. You know, yeah, I was going to say, sure. sure no, in case they they're like Officer Tatum or, or a homeboy that ran for governor, Larry Elder, and, you know, all these, you know, conservatives. But in this case, it'd be like, these are. I would love to see something like happen because Jen Psaki and the Biden regime. They'd be in the White House the next day, the NFL. They'd all be like, what do we do about these Democrat black billionaires? Like, do we need to pull out an old rape case on them? You mm. know what I'm saying? Do we need to publicize the fact that they were on trial for different things and they're not like angels? Or like, do we need to start digging in their taxes and go on a fishing exposition? expedition? Like, what would they do if black folk from the left started to say yeah i don't i don't think we should i don't think america should be involved in the olympics or like hey i i support the canadian truckers like if they say that they'd be like ah how do we silence these people i don't know what the numbers are exactly but <clears throat> i don't know how many articles i've read where it's just ratings for the olympics have are, are abysmal right yeah. nobody's watching nobody's yeah. paying attention nobody cares yeah um <clears throat> but also to now that we're towards the end of chingo chats we've done all the not political stuff i do want to touch back on this the truckers the canadian truckers this has been the most effective protest in in the history of protest mm-hmm. when we now know americans now know people now know around the world around the globe around the country that if things were to get out of hand and americans didn't agree with it the truckers more than likely will have your back because they'll be on your side of it and they could literally halt everything 
So that's pretty scary to them too. So they're going to try everything they can to discredit people like Joe Rogan that have messages that go against the grain or anybody else, white or black, you know, centrist, conservative, that goes against the left's narrative. That, that left, you ever seen a glass where you hit it with like a rock and it starts to spider web, right? It starts to break. It, it, that's where it's at right now. And it's being held together by like really strong tension. Trevor on the other Noah. Side. Yes, exactly. And all, the, yeah. yep, yeah, you're right. All those late night people, for example, or the SNL people. Everything. Like, for example, <clears throat> AOC came down to Texas to start campaigning. Why? Because no politician wants to be on the same stage with Joe Biden. He's radioactive. He's about to hit single digit approval rating, like abysmal. This shit is dead on arrival. And they rather have AOC come out here by herself. Like if, if Biden, if they had wheeled him out here in the middle of all his fucking debacles, I'm sure a lot of these Democrat, uh, politicians in texas would have had like oil changes to get that day like i gotta get the tires rotated the same way stacy abrams did him in georgia you know who uh aoc was met by when she got to texas right who a bunch of pink pill tamale listeners oh yeah what happened uh, patrons from Mighty Souls Discord where they, they had Trump signs and they had a whole little uh oh they went to kind of like counter uh-huh yeah mm-hmm. i mean we mentioned it on rpt like there's a reason AOC, when she came to visit Texas, she didn't take her ass to Laredo, Del Rio, McAllen, Brownsville, Edinburgh, none of that. Yeah. You know, El Paso. She didn't go to none of these places that have had a, a belly full of this wide open border. She went to where the social justice warriors, the college kids, are, oh my God, <laughs> I fucking love your slogan. Give me a bumper sticker. Yes, take away the guns. They're bad. Uh, well, I, I think there's, there'll probably be a lot of developments between now and Thursday, Friday's episodes of the, the podcast with the truckers. So everybody just keep an eye out, you know, don't try to let it get swept under the rug by any means. Yeah. I think what the truckers might do is not retreat, but like maybe, I don't know. They might leave. No, nah, the, there's no leaving. I mean, I don't know. They might, because at this point they are at war with their government their war is calling them economic terrorists they're freezing funds they're cutting off supplies they're threatening to take away their kids and they're just like defaming them every which way so some people would argue like okay take the fight back to wherever you're from like park your truck like basically decentralize it like um still don't go to work still create traffic but maybe don't do it here at the uh at the border, I don't know. Um, I don't know exactly what it was, but I think it was Tim Pool or somebody I was listening to that was talking about who could, who could remove somebody, a prime minister from office. And I'm pretty sure they said uh, the queen, the queen can. So the queen has the say where, kind of like in America, you could impeach. There's a, president. a Canadian queen or which queen? No, the queen of England. Wow. Yeah. But I'd have to look into that because I'd never heard that before. It's so weird that they got they still got that connection like that. Yeah, not just them, but like Australia and a bunch of other countries have that kind of uh, authority to still you know look up to. I don't know. It, it was it was a crazy thought because oh. at some point you might have to think that Trudeau is becoming more of a pain and nuisance for other countries, especially the United States. But then you got Breezy being like, "I need you to get this under control because it's hurting uh, American commerce now as well." So well, that's the excuse, but right. I don't think it has anything to do with. It. No, you're right. It don't so, got shit to do with commerce. We'll see. Yeah, no, I think um, Trudeau is um, digging his heels in the sand. They're doubling down. Mm -hmm. He's taking orders from the, uh, you know, the apparatus, the motherfucking party of davos the soros and the the great reset the motherfucking great reset r involves these people reorganizing society in favor of the elites just you know a lot has changed since this little bug leaked out of a uh, level four pla lab yeah bio bioweapons lab uh can the queen of england fire prime minister well we'll, we'll read more about it i know y'all heard that <laughs> we'll talk about this on thursday this was fun, man. This was a, also a very intense podcast, but also fun. But also fun. But also fun. Poodle fun. And also entertaining and a fun. And the next fight companion. What did you call it? Uh, Chingaso Night. Chingaso Night Night will be fun as well. We'll get more people in here. We'll keep it lively. We'll figure out a way to uh, keep the counter going so people can watch along with us. So you can we can sync up the rounds and shit. Yeah, figure it out, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was a good, it was a fun, uh, dry run. Yeah. So uh, I have jujitsu tonight. I'm gonna try to roll extra hey. hard. I'm gonna try to roll extra hard. 
so that uh, I could drop some of these motherfucking pounds and shit. And then I'm looking forward to the DEXA scan and, and doing things that way. But uh, Legalized Freedom Tour is right around the corner, February 27th, Raleigh, North Carolina, Europe first. Spread the word. We want to continue to grow the podcast, grow the audience. Um, we're definitely going to try to utilize the tour as a tool to promote the podcast because if shit ever shuts down again we want to be all the way ready for these tyrants you're gonna have so many people in the crowd at shows now that like it's been slowly like growing as a snowball but now i think you're gonna have a huge amount of people i hope so i hope so and um yeah a lot of these new ideas and new material um is very relevant to all this stuff so uh, i'm looking forward to seeing you guys at the shows, Legalized Freedom Tour. Get your tickets now, chingobling.com. Y'all be safe. We're doing the weigh-in Friday mm -hmm. and keep it moving. Shout out to all the patrons, everybody on the Discord. Talk to you later. Peace.